Today we're going to start by learning about um, specific functions. So we've learned about periodic functions and what it means to be a period and we've um, found amplitude and cycles and all of those things. So we're going to look at specific kinds of trigonometric functions. So the sine function. Uh, the sine function, the most basic form, our parent function, is y equals sine of theta. And this matches the measure of theta of an angle in standard position with the y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. So what we're going to be doing is taking the unit circle that we've already learned. And what you do is, like, you take, um, you know that it's, we have this point on 0. So if we have um, this as our x-axis, what happens is we take and we break open that circle because we know at pi over 2 our value is 1. So at pi over 2 our value is 1. And then it goes back down at pi and then we're in negative values at 3 pi over 2 and then we're back to where we started at pi over 2. So what we've just taken is taken this circle and split it into 1, 2, 3, 4 different parts and made what's called a sine curve. So this is what a, uh, a graph of a sine function looks like. So um, estimating sine values by graphing. What's a reasonable estimate for the value from the graph? And then check your estimate with a calculator. So for the first one, if we take the sine of 2, you can see here that they've added 2 onto our graph. So if we know this is 1 right here, what would be an approximate value of the sine of 2? Well, it's going to be a little bit less than 1. Very, very close. Go ahead and put that into your calculators and see what you get for your value. Um, now what you may have to do here is, um, because we're not talking about degree values, since we're not in this circle anymore, um, we're talking about radian measure. You may need to go to your calculator, go to mode, and then um, go down. Like if you have a TI, um, we have radians and degrees. Make sure radians is the one that's blacked out. Because if you do degrees, it's going to give you like 0 0.03, which we can obviously tell this is definitely way more than 0 0.03, which is down here. Okay, so put that in radian mode, and you get, um, it's about equal to 0.9. So we know it's just a little bit less than 1. What about the sine of pi? Well, here's pi. What's an acceptable value for pi? Well, we already know the sine of pi is 0. If you put it into your calculator, sine of pi, where am I? Pi, okay. There, there it is, sine of pi. Sine of pi is zero. Okay, so those are estimations. And how we can use um, our curves to help us predict. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try these two, see if you can come up with an approximation for these values, uh, sine of three, sine of three pi over two. Um, make sure when you check them that you have your calculator in radian mode. Otherwise you get the wrong answer. Okay, the graph of a sine function is called a sine curve. By varying the period, you get different sine curves. So if you vary the period, you either get like a longer, more stretched out sine curve, or you get a shorter, tinier one. So let's use the graph of y equals sine of 4x, which is this one right here. So what they're showing you is that your x values range from 0 to 2 pi. That means this value is 0, <clears throat> and this value here is 2 pi. Um, the y minimum is negative 2, so that's down here. The y max is positive 2, that's up here. Oops, not negative, that's positive 2. And the scale of 1. <clears throat> Alright, so how many cycles occur on this graph? Remember, cycles are from where 1 begins to where it ends, and then goes again. 1, 2, three, four. So on this graph there are four cycles. So four cycles from zero to two pi. What's the period of y equals sine of four x? To find our period we take our y value or our x value. So we're going from zero to two pi 
And in that amount of time, we complete four cycles. So 2 pi divided by 4 is pi over 2. So pi over 2 is our period that tells us how long each, um, how much space each curve takes up. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try these two, and I want you to compare them with your partner. So these are two different sine curves. See, sine always starts at the origin, 0, 0. Um, the first one goes from 0 to 4 pi, and you can see it completes two cycles. And the second one goes from 0 to negative 4 pi, which means it's going in a negative direction. And it completes 1, 2, 3 cycles. So see if you can figure out the periods of each of those. Uh, the graphing calculator screen shows four graphs of a, um, a y equals a sine x, and each x-axis shows values from 0 to 2. So here I have um, four different sine curves. So you can see the ones on the top are both positive values. So it starts at 0, 0, goes up first, and then goes down. The bottom two both have negative values, so they go down first and then up. But both start, or all four start at 0, 0. And you can see that the one with the 2 in front of it, the 2 sine x, has a much taller curve than just the sine of x. What is the amplitude of each sine curve? Well, you can see that in y equals sine of x, oops, in y equals sine of x, our amplitude is from positive 1 to negative 1. So our amplitude is 1. Um, in 2, it's from positive 2 to negative 2, so it's 2. Um, in negative sine, it's 1. And in negative 2 sine, it's negative 2, or just 2. So you can see that depending on your value of a, this a value is going to give you your amplitude of your sine. It's going to tell you how tall or how short your curve rises and falls. So properties of sine functions. Suppose y equals a sine of b theta, where a is not 0 and b is greater than 0, and pi, or theta, is in radians. So we're going to look at um, a. This is the amplitude of the function. If a is positive, it starts going up first. If a is negative, it starts going down first. b is the number of cycles in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So the number um, after your sign is going to tell you how many cycles you're going to complete. That's when we looked at the one that was 4x, it completed 4 cycles. 2 pi over b is the period of the function. So this tells you your period. How many cycles do you complete? Um, you can use 5 points to sketch a curve. You do the 0, the maximum, the 0, the minimum, and then back to the 0 again. So let's sketch a graph. What is the graph of one cycle of a sine curve with amplitude of 2, period 4 pi, midline y equals 0, and a is greater than 0? That means a is positive. Using the form y equals a sine b, what's an equation for the sine curve? Well, we know our period is 4 pi, so I'm going to, oops. Um, period is 4 pi, so I'm going to say 0. This is 2 pi. This is 4 pi. So I know that from beginning to end, I'm going to go through all three of these points because I go through my first spot, my last spot, and then halfway in between for my curve. So there's my period. Look at my amplitude. My amplitude is 2. 2 tells me how high and how low it goes. And these are going to be halfway in between. So halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. So I know at pi, I'm going to be up to 2, because I know my, um, my a value is positive, so I have to go up first. And then at 3 pi, I'm going to be at the value of negative 2. Okay, so I have my 5 points. I can sketch my curve. Hopefully yours looks a little bit nicer than mine does. Okay, now we need to write an equation for this. So I'm going to use um, this as my, my equation, y equals a sine of b. Now I know my a value is the same as my amplitude. So y equals 2 
sine of. Now we need to be able to find out what b is. Do you remember from the last slide how I told you to find b? Well, 2 pi over b represents my period. So that equals 4 pi. So I need to find what value of b would make this to be true. Um, b would have to be 1 half in order to make that be true. So this becomes 1 half and theta. So y equals 2 sine 1 half theta. Now we're going to work the opposite way. I'm going to give you an equation and I want you to make a graph. So here's my equation. y equals 1 half sine 2 theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to find my values of a and b. So a is my amplitude. That's 1 half. So that means I'm going to go up one half of a unit and down one half of a unit. Okay, and I also have to find um, my period. So in order to do that, I need to take my 2 pi over b and set that equal to 2 and just solve for b, or 2 over 1. So 2b equals 2 pi, so b equals pi. So I know from beginning to end, you can think of it this way, from beginning to end, I'm going to go to the unit of pi. So I'm going to start here, and I know I'm going to go halfway is pi over 2, I'm going to end at pi. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi, um, 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4, and then I have 3 pi over 4. Divide those into 4 units. Okay, so my a value is positive, so that means I'm going to go up this one's 1, this is negative 1, that means I'm going to go up a half, and I'm going to go down a half over here. I should probably do these in another color, that might be more easy to see. Look, red, 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 red. So then I just connect all my dots into a smooth curve, and there is my sine curve. Oh, and there it is again. Oh, look, we do good work. All right, so that's all for the sine curve. I hope you learned a lot and that um, you understood everything that you learned. Tomorrow we're going to talk about cosine, um, or in the next lesson. And cosine is very, very similar to sine, except if you remember from our unit circle, we look at our values of x, um, and remember, cosine, sine. So we talked about the sine function being here, um, starting at 0, whereas cosine function is going to start at 1. So instead of being like this, our sine function is actually going to start at the top and then go down and back up and down. So sine and cosine are basically the same types of functions, except sine always starts at the origin and cosine starts at whatever your amplitude is. All right. Well, look, you already know like half the lesson for next time. Hope you have a good night.